Right, this is how you kill a game. So this one? I can already tell you what killed Overwatch, and we even watched it earlier this stream. It was that DJ Khaled concert. Ended it on the spot, to be honest. Overwatch was once the future of esports. Our goal is to create the world's premier esport league. Hey, you did it. And players can thrive for years to come, and fans are made for life. Blizzard, esports fans, and even casual players. Everyone was hyped. I used to love Overwatch. I was definitely in that group. I said, Are you ready? But because it is boring as F. Overwatch is boring as F. There's, a, there's also a big change that the game's just really just fucking boring. Completely. How about you balance your game instead next time? Oh my god, I hate this game. So we have It's honestly hard for Blizzard to listen to fan feedback though when they have to sexually assault women at the office. Like it's a hard balancing act they have to perform where it's like, hey, we have to work on the game, but we also have to sexually assault our employees, you know, with one or the other. Really did seem like the Overwatch League was going to be the Overwatch League was the future. It was so close too. So close. So they brought in DJ Khaled. Just plain bad luck torched what should have been one of the biggest esports in the world, leaving everyone disappointed. Overwatch promised a different take on FPS games. It was more colorful, drew some mechanics from MOBAs, and just generally seemed like a new approach to a genre that was often intimidating. It was pretty fresh. I mean, and yeah. At first, it, it was fun. Like I used to like it. That paid off. 9.7 million players logged on to Overwatch's open beta in 2016. And just a few months after launch, the game had 20 million Ooh. registered players. Overwatch quickly developed a small, mostly unofficial esports scene, but Blizzard had something bigger in mind. Victory. The biggest crime Overwatch, Overwatch committed was killing lawbreakers. Of e with a city -based franchise format. Yeah, if only lawbreakers had a, a better this launch. Was unheard of in esports, but what was even crazier was the alleged buy-in. According to former ESPN reporter Jacob Wolf, Blizzard was allegedly asking for $20 million for each franchise what? in the Overwatch League. Backed by major esports teams and huge investors- 20 mil? Like the Kraft family, who owned the New England Patriots, among other sports teams. Viewership was solid, the venue was always packed, and people seemed to like cheering for their home team. Over 300,000 people watched the London Spitfire become the first ever Overwatch League champion. I didn't watch. Who did XQC used to play for? Was it the Sentinels? Thanks to Prime Steve. It was the Fuel? Okay, okay. That was Fuel. So, how exactly did Overwatch go from Thanks to Prime City? So quickly. Well, first, Blizzard seemed to have no idea how to balance their game. What's up, everyone? This is Jeff here Jeff. with a developer update to tell you about something super awesome, which is big changes coming for Mercy. For example, when Blizzard tried to rework Mercy's Resurrect Ultimate, they unintentionally buffed her to must pick or throwing status. The Mercy meta took over the game, and it's not hard to see why. Just look at Muse Elk res three times in 15 <laughs> seconds. Uh, ready to go? Uh, not seeing you going to bed? Hey! Oh, there you go. hey. And he's back again. There you go. Okay. okay. And then you're back oh, again, boy. Thank you. That's Infinite yeah. resuscitation. That's another oh, boy. Seems like a cool change. Blizzard nerfed Mercy into the ground after that. But then they made things worse. Goats. 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 It's a goat. I, I, I think it's a goat. Can you explain what goats is? Jesus We've Christ. talked about goats plenty of times before, but basically, Blizzard accidentally balanced the game in such a way that the optimal comp at a high level was three tanks, three healers, and no DPS. The death ball of beefy health bars, big shields, and endless healing ran over or won. I stopped playing after season. Traps. What? Would have been like season three? Season two or three? So I don't think I ever saw this. Wow, this looks fucking boring. <laughs> Holy shit. Now 
one of the big problems with this is that goats was boring as hell to that, watch. That's what I was saying. Of the goats heroes required any actual skill to use beyond timing. I miss season so one of Overwatch. It really was so much fun. That with um, you know, you used to go major, six crazy, Winston when you were right getting desperate on attack. Shine. Oh, it was, it was but so But then goofy. they kept adding in heroes that could displace. It's a genuinely good time. That had barriers. Needless to say, the Overwatch League suffered as a result of goats. It wasn't just boring to watch. It also sucked to play, and the player base got bored and pissed. I would rather do push-ups. I would rather the beta in the first wait. season, yeah. I would rather run a mile. Things like that. Those are some things I'd rather do than play Overwatch right now at this moment because it is boring as f. Remember, Overwatch was supposed to be a fresh take on FPS games. But with GOATS, it wasn't even really a shooter anymore. The game lost its soul. But that's not all it lost. In yep, 2020, we already watched Blizzard the new Channel 5. $160 $160 deal with YouTube. What? Only streams exclusively to that platform what? instead of broadcasting on Twitch. They made this deal in 2020. Overwatch was already on its way out that at that time, right? The game's been dead for... Actually, I'm curious. How long has Overwatch been dead for? I feel like it's been dead for quite a while. I, this this deal came so... YouTube got fucked. Where would I find the accurate player count numbers? Here we go. No, by 20, uh, February 2020, it was still holding. Uh, it looks to be like roughly 5 mil active. It was in the middle of dropping though. Like it, it was like it was already coming down when they signed this deal. Assuming this is even like an accurate uh, chart. But yeah, I definitely remember in 2020, it was already becoming a joke. And so when you're not on Twitch, all of a sudden, you're going to lose that click-through traffic of just people kind of who are idling or doing something else, working, you know, and then all of a sudden it's like, oh, you know, it's like, it's not quite the same thing with YouTube. It's harder to find the channel. You're not just going to, you know, click into YouTube. I don't even know. Like, I mean, there are people that stream on YouTube. I never see them. But, and so that's going to be a frustrating thing. It's like when um, Facebook was a thing, right? Facebook streaming thing, you know, numbers went off a cliff, same thing. Pandemic was so helping when it. you're not on Twitch, it's going to be, you're Did it choosing get a bigger during the pandemic? Path. I doubt it. So the meta sucked. I feel like most people chose different toilet. games. What else could go wrong? Well, remember how the Overwatch League was supposed to be a city-based league? By 2020, that still hadn't happened. Blizzard had plans to have teams fly internationally for home and away games, but that just seemed too ambitious for, well, everyone. Well, according to a report from Upcomer, the London Spitfire will- Yeah, look at this. January 6, 2020, they're already talking about his Overwatch dying. And then YouTube signs a $160 million deal a month later. Apparently have to travel- I thought so. I knew it was already on its way out. ...6,923 miles during season three. And according to that same report, the Boston Uprising will have to travel an estimated 71,460 miles as well. Flying all over the world all season long is stressful. And most pros prefer the idea of just staying home all day and streaming on Twitch instead. After all, they'd probably pick up more views than the Overwatch League would on YouTube. I think if anything, Overwatch was just like a stepping stone to get here where I am now, because now I'm at, I just feel at home, man. I'm playing a game that's like a hybrid of like CS and Overwatch. It's easy to say There's that Valorant Billings. Blizzard finally put the last nail in Overwatch's coffin. Blizzard was one of the most beloved companies in gaming. Since then, their reputation has been destroyed by <laughs> scandals, baffling yep. decisions, and the reveal that women employees are treated horribly at the company. Balance issues and weird league format that didn't end up actually happening because of COVID. That aside, will do it. A lot of people just didn't want to play Blizzard games anymore. But Blizzard wants people to remember the good old days of 2016, when they were hyped for a new Overwatch game. Monsieur, does this mean Overwatch is back? No, it's dead. It's in the ground. We buried it. It's done. It's not coming back. We canceled Overwatch 2 as well. <sighs> yes. Yes, we are. Whee! That's right, they announced Overwatch 2. But why? Fans asked why they're even <laughs> needed to be in Overwatch 2 when yeah, features are added to Overwatch right. 1 all the time. They thought it was a money grab, making people pay $50 to keep playing literally the same thing with an updated UI. Same game. 
Overwatch 2 was Blizzard finally delivering the death blow to Overwatch 1. After all, why play the game when it's just a waiting room for the sequel? Also the true. Stupid suffered. idea. COVID annihilated Papa Bears. for the game because of online play, but now the whole league was blindsided by finding out that they were playing a game that didn't even matter anymore. Not to mention the fact that Overwatch 2 was moving from 6v6 to 5v5 in an attempt to cover for Blizzard's what? total inability to balance the game. That meant that every I didn't franchise know that. was going to have to cut a starting player, and pros were not happy. The game keeps getting delayed, and somehow they're going to be playing the next season of the Overwatch League on an unreleased version of Overwatch 2, which doesn't inspire a lot of confidence. For me, if the what? game isn't ready and the community gets that initial touch and they're not happy this with it... This is baffling. I didn't know any of this. In my opinion, really bad for the game, the eSport, and potentially Blizzard. Ultimately, it wasn't one thing that killed Makes me sub Eric. Sports. It wasn't Mercy or Brigida or Goats. It wasn't moving to YouTube or planning home and away games. Hold on, I want to see that. How many viewers do they get on YouTube? Oh, it's not viewers, it's total views. I was going to say, that's fucking good. ...to YouTube or planning home and away games. Still pretty big. It wasn't charging insane prices to get into a league that few ended up caring about. It wasn't Valorant or Overwatch mm. 2 either. What killed Overwatch was Blizzard. It was an avalanche of decisions that kneecapped the game before it could really succeed and become the massive esport its fans knew it could be. But the game is still popular. Casual fans love it, and they always have. There's still a good game hiding under all of Blizzard's mistakes. Oh, well, let's not get carried away. The Overwatch League is still chugging there's, there's along, not a good and game Blizzard there. is going to use Overwatch 2 as a fresh start. The question is, can anyone really trust them this time? Thanks for watching. If you want more content like this... That was pretty interesting. That actually showed me some things I didn't know about uh, Overwatch 2 and Overwatch. Interesting. Fuck Blizzard. Yeah, fuck Blizzard. Agreed. But the Overwatch 2, am I fucking right? So what is Overwatch 2 supposed to be then? I thought it was like they were adding a story mode. And that was like the big thing. What else? That's it? That's actually it? New UI, new maps, and a story mode. Oh, three new maps.